Good morning. Today we are going to learn in physical geology and geomorphology is about tidal theory, tidal hypothesis or tidal theory. Uh, the tide, any you know, um, any of the cyclic formation of one astronomical body caused by gravitational force exerted by others. Uh, the most you know familiar uh, thing that we can come across is the periodic vibration of sea levels on the earth that corresponds to, uh, corresponds to the change in the relative position of the sun and the moon okay because of the position of the sun and the moon we have the high tides and the low tides on the earth right so it is similar so the tide may be regarded as you know uh, forced wave or you know particularly running wave and uh, you know uh, in a you know uh, particular standing waves that may be manifested by vertical movement of sea surface okay uh, the you know or you can say that it is maximum minimum uh, height of the of water sea water are also called as you know high tide and low tide <coughs> and the alternating uh, you know horizontal movement of you know uh, of water and the tide the world ebb flows from these areas okay now uh, what happens in tidal hypothesis is that it has been observed that the uh, you know uh, sir james british uh, was a british scientist and he uh, propounded that the uh, you know uh, uh, he had given this tidal hypothesis to explain the origin of the earth just hold on Okay, so uh, just hold on. Yeah, the so Sir James uh, Jane, uh, uh, he was a British uh, scientist. He propounded this tidal theory uh, or tidal hypothesis to explain the origin of the Earth. So in early, uh, like in uh, 1990, while another British scientist, Harold Jeffrey, 
suggested modification in the tidal hypothesis in 1929. So, and thus making it a more relevant and scientific in context of increasing knowledge of cosmic ideas of now uh, into the first quarter of the 20th century. Now, this hypothesis explains uh, that uh, the modern, uh, you know, uh, hypothesis of origin of the earth and the solar system. So the tidal uh, theory of origin of the solar system involving the approach and that is uh, approach near sun of another star. So this uh, set up a tidal forces of gravitational pull and the instability of the sun resulted in, you know, uh, uh, resulted in sun uh, in parts of masses of being torn off from the planet, you know, to form the planets. Now, this theory was basically proposed by, uh, you know, Sir James Jean, uh, you know, uh, during his uh, 1990s. Now, uh, what happened in Sir Harold uh, had modified this theory of tidal hypothesis. Okay. Uh, Jean um, postulated that his hypothesis on the basis of certain exonomy, that is the self-proved uh, factors, as like the solar system was formed from the sun and uh, others, including the stars. Okay, so uh, in this, in the beginning, the sun was a big, uh, uh, indecent, uh, you know, um, gaseous mass of matter. So, beside the sun, there was another star named intruding star uh, in the universe. Now, this intrude, uh, intruding star was much bigger in size than that of the primitive sun. Okay. So, the, prim the primitive sun was uh, stationary and was rotating on its axis. The intruding sun or the intruding star was uh, moving along uh, which a path in such a way that it was uh, you know designated to come near the primitive uh, sun so uh, there was a great impact of tidal forces of intruding uh, star in the surface of the primitive sun okay so sir james jean uh, you know thought uh, postulated due to you know uh, that due to the massive gravitational forces okay uh, you know what happened is uh, the intruding star and the huge amount of matter was ejected from the primitive sun okay what it happened it happened because of the large amount of you know matter was ejected from the primitive star now uh, uh, primitive sun each later on became the building material of the future planetary system. Now, according to Newton's law of universe, uh, you know, universal gravitation that was given in 1687. What, what was the universal law of gravitation? Uh, he said that uh, every body on, on this universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of the mass of the two bodies and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay. So, according to that, he said that um, any body in this universe has a gravitational pull based on their uh, masses and it is inversely proportional to the distance between these two bodies. It means that the intensity of the gravitational uh, you know, force of the intruding star and the primitive sun would depend upon the two factors, that is, the product of the mass of the intruding star and the primitive sun. Okay. Now, uh, what did, uh, you know, the, the distance between the two uh, stars, that is, uh, are directly relation in relation between the product of the mass of the intruding star and the primitive sun that becomes the equation and uh, you know gravitational um, um, gravitation and the product of the force of the you know two stars are uh, inverse so 
um, see james you know postulated his hypothesis on the basis of certain axonomy that is the solar system uh, are formed from the sun and another intruding star in in the beginning the uh, you know sun was a big you know incident gaseous mass of uh, you know matter besides the sun there was another star uh, you know termed as intruding star star in the universe and intruding star was much bigger in size uh, than the primitive sun so the primitive sun was stationary and uh, was you know rotating on its axis the intruding star was moving along which uh, such a path uh, in uh, in such a way that it was destined to become uh, you know nearer to the primitive uh, star now there was a great impact of tidal force of intruding star on the surface of the primitive sun so james uh, uh, postulated that due to the massive gravitational force of intruding star a huge amount of matter was ejected from the primitive sun which was later on which later on became the building material of the future planetary system now according to this newton law of universal the gravitational pull the gravitation that everybody uh, in the universe uh, attracts every other body from the force which is directly proportional to the product of mass of the two bodies and the inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them it means that uh, you know uh, the product of the mass of the intruding star and the primitive sun are you know and the distance between them are related now there are you know uh, directions between the products of the mass and the intruding star and the primitive sun the gravitational product of the sun you know forces uh, force mass of the two stars now this means that if the product of the mass of the intruding star uh, and the primitive sun is high the amount of gravitational pull between them uh, also uh, be the high you know and if the product of the mass of the two star is low the amount of gravitational force will also be low so in in simple word it means that if the mass of the intruding star is high the gravitational force uh, exerted by it will be high and since james james assumed that the intruding star is much bigger than the primitive sun the former exerted uh, larger amount of gravitational pull on the surface of the primitive sun and uh, the gravitational pull of the uh, primitive sun which was a ejection of the matter from the primitive surface of the sun now secondly there is an universal uh, relation between gravitational force of the two stars and the distance between the item that is the uh, the gravitational force is inversely proportional to the distance between intruding star and the primitive sun it means that the distance between two stars decreases uh, the amount of the gravitational force between them uh, uh, increases and as the distance between uh, the two stars increases the gravitational force between them also decreases so since the intruding star was coming closer and the primitive uh, to the primitive star, uh, sun and hence the amount of gravitational force between them all was also increasing so the evolution evolution of the you know uh, filament like you know i have discussed this so evolution of the filament is that according to james chain the intruding stars uh, was a uh, you know a continuous moving along such a path that it was coming near uh, to the primitive sun and thus exerted a gaseous tidal forces that is gravitational pulls on the surface of the primitive sun so as the intruding star came near to the uh, nearer and nearer to the primitive sun the gravitational force went on increasing with the result of a tidal force also increasing in these uh, the, in the in the in between the two stars okay uh now this is what has happened so the, the, it formed a cigar like shape so this is a prim, this was once a primitive sun and there was a nearby star which was moving so it caused a pull of the batters from the sun, surface of the sun and that's why it is in a 
cigar like shape because of the pull of the two stars okay uh now when the intruding star came near to the you know primitive sun the gravitational force become maximum with the result a you know giant cigar shaped tide thousands of kilometers in length was created in outer surface of the primitive sun a huge mass of matter in the shape of cigar was ejected and the primitive sun uh, to that of a primitive sun so jean jeans called this is a cigar shaped matter as a filament which uh, was much thicker in the center and thinner on the uh, on the edges so according to uh, james jean intruding star was uh, continuously moving along with, uh, such a path that it was coming closer to the primitive sun and thus exerted a gaseous tidal forces or the uh, you know gravitational pull on the surface of the primitive sun so as the intruding star came near to the you know and nearer and nearer to the primitive sun the gravitational force went on increasing with the result you know uh, the tidal forces are also increased so when the intruding star came nearest to the primitive sun it a uh, gravitational force became maximum with the result uh, a giant cigar like tide and thousands of kilometers in length was created on the outer surface of the primitive sun so the ultimately huge mass of matter in the shape of cigar was ejected from the primitive sun and james chin called it as a cigar shaped matter as a filament which was much thicker in center and thinner and uh, in a um, on the and the shaper in the end or the edges okay so this is what has happened this is an intruding star and this was a sun primitive sun so because an intruding star was moving closer to the earth it started you know pulling the uh, solar material on its way and it get detached and that's why it is elongated in a shape of a you know a cigar that is called filament of this the formation of the planetary um, planet uh, according to the you know uh, tidal hypothesis okay the shape of the ejected filament with the thick middle portion uh, you know uh, and trapping ends may be explained in the following manner like uh, when the intruding star was at the distance uh, placed from the primitive sun but not so distant that it would not exert external you know um, um, attra attractional pull of the surface of the primitive sun so the gravitational attraction near, uh, you know exerted by it on the surface of the primitive sun was also uh, low due to the greater distance between them now there one quantity of you know first part of the uh, you know incident matter came out from the surface of the primitive sun so uh, when in, uh, intruding star came nearest to the primitive sun uh, the maximum amount of gravitational attraction was exerted by it on the surface of the primitive sun due to the maximum distance the minimum distance between them the attra uh, you know attractional uh, tidal force uh, resulted into ejection of maximum amount of um, you know in the second uh, matter which is present in the middle portion of the filament that's why the large you know planet are in the middle so when the intruding star moved away um, uh, from the you know primitive uh, sun but not so far off that it could not exert any more uh, gravitational pull on the primitive sun the gravitational um, and attraction exerted by on uh, by it on the primitive sun became low due to greater distance between them and thus small quantity of in incident uh, you know matter came out of the surface of the sun making you know uh, uh, from the primitive sun making a shape of matter or that is ejected in a primitive way uh, in a shape of a cigar that is initially it was on a distance so small amount was uh, pulled out so the planet size is smaller and in when it was close to the earth Uh, sorry close to the sun the larger masses was pulled off from the primitive sun so the larger planets are at the center and 
then as the star was moving away again moving away from the you know uh, primitive sun uh, but the pull uh, the gravitational pull became weaker so exert, you know taking ejecting a uh, smaller portion of the solar material uh, and uh, which uh, in on the longer run on consolidation became a smaller parts of uh, you know um, of planets that are the inner planets that we know as today okay so the formation uh, now this is what had happened in you know uh, the formation of the filament so the gradually and gradually the intruding star moved away from the primitive sun and thus went out of the domain of the gravitational field of our primitive sun so in the beginning when the filament was detached from the primitive sun it followed the intruding star as it was pulled away uh, by the intruding star so the filament later uh, you know uh, tried to keep the pace with the intruding star from the you know some time but could no longer exert you know exceed ultimately Uh, leaving in in the filament and started revolving around the primitive sun so the formation of the uh, planet from the filament like you know uh, how it uh, it formed okay uh, so that that uh, is uh, another you know uh, a, 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 a process like you now according to uh, james jean nine planet of our solar system were formed due to cooling and conden condensation of the incident uh, masses of the gaseous matter of the filament the filament after being uh, detached from the sun began to cool down thus the filament started uh, you know contracting in size in on cooling so the contraction of the filament led to the breaking of uh, you know several pieces and each pieces was condensed to form uh, one separate planet now this process led to the formation of nine planets the filament of incident uh, incident uh, gaseous matter allowing bigger uh, planet to form in its middle uh, and a uh, portion like jupiter and saturn okay so jupiter and saturn are on in the middle because of the uh, larger pull when the sun uh, prim, uh, intruding star was closer okay and smaller ones are uh, towards on the uh, two ends that is steeping and on the of uh, the uh, you know that is the remaining parts of the primitive sun and that became uh, our uh, other planets the satellites of the planets were formed due to the gravitational pull and tidal uh, and tidal effect parted parted by the sun on the outer surface of the newly formed planet now the process of the formation of the satellite Uh, caused uh, when the amount of matter ejected from the planet so to uh, the formation of the new satellite becoming uh, you know became became so low that it could not be able uh, you know could not be able to hold the together and this matters by its central uh, you know gravitational attraction by the cooling of the primitive uh, incident uh, you know gaseous planet was De uh, depending upon the size of the planet so the planet of the greater mars cooled very slowly while the you know smaller planets and the satellite condensed to you know uh, liquid and then to uh, solid form within few uh, very short period of time now this may be a possible reasons for a larger number of satellites of the bigger planet so we in just hold on okay just hold on there was a problem with the signal yeah so uh so there are evidences in the favor of this hypothesis what are the evidences of the you know favor of the hypothesis that the high tidal hypothesis of james jeans had not only explained the origin of the solar system and the planet but also attempted successfully to extend uh, to solve the various problems of solar system related to the shape size and structure and in you know, a peculiar motion of the planetary systems okay 
now the uh, there are you know few characteristics that explains it now the few characteristics of solar system are more or less explained in the on the basis of the uh, hypothesis you know the shape and uh, you know ordering of the planets we know like mercury venus earth mars are you know small planets and then we have a belt of asteroid which was once uh, known as a, you know a, a planet which fragmented then jupiter uh then we have saturn uran you know uran uh, neptune and uranus and at the end pluto which has been declined now by the planetary system because we have a larger you know uh, asteroid compared to pluto's okay now the shape in order the filament rejected from the you know primitive sun was in the shape of cigar and uh, it was thick in the middle and narrow at the end so uh the you know filament were bigger in sizes than the planet formed from the condensation matter and taping at the end so the frag you know arrangement of the planet formed the uh, filament uh, clear matches to the present planetary arrangement as that of we see today so our solar system if we uh, you know start from the sun the size of the planet that is mercury venus earth you know uh, uh, and mars which is an air you know, exception uh, that is it increases up to jupiter which is the biggest planet and occupies almost um, the center portion of the solar system the size of the planet after jupiter is saturn uranus and neptune again decreases till the uh, location of the smallest plan uh, you know once known planet was pluto at the extreme end so it may be you know pointed out that the james jean propounded his hypothesis because uh you know, before the disco uh, you know, discovery of pluto thus this uh, discovery of planet pluto having you know smallest size and its location at the extreme end further enhanced the significance of the tidal hypothesis now uh, ordering the arrangement of the satellites also are seen so the tidal uh, theory of you know evolution of celestial body that is based on the action of the tidal force specifically such as the theory explained in the moon evolution so uh, it applic uh, the application of the continuum mechanics to interpret the uh, predict the tidal deformation of the planet planetary is and the satellite bodies and their atmosphere and ocean under gravitational loading of another astronomical bodies or you know body uh, the common uh, it it is commonly referred to as a fluid dynamic motion of the earth and the oceans the tidal motion caused by the gravitational attraction between the earth and the moon and the sun was also given by newton theory of gravitation so there are number of satellites also you know they are working uh, you know in accordance to the tidal hypothesis like uh you know ordering of uh of the you know uh satellites according to this hypothesis the satellites of the planet were formed through condensation of in desiccant uh, gaseous matter ejected from the planet in the same manner uh, as a planet were ejected from the uh, in primitive sun now there are almost same type of arrangement of the satellites uh, you know around the planet as the arrangement of the planet around the sun is in our solar system the smaller ones at the end of the you know bigger ones um, in the middle ones for example if a planet has several satellites the biggest uh, satellite is placed in the middle and the smallest uh, one uh, arcs around the uh, you know at the ends so the arrangement of the satellite of jupiter saturn confirms the above fact that the arrangement of the satellite is that the numbers and the sizes of the satellites uh, uh the, the this is a you know uh, let's uh, not go into the you know uh, tidal theory of you know what earth how earth behaves when there's a gravitational pull of you know sun and the moon so like you know water is also you know the surface water is also pulled the similar way in the primitive time the same uh, you know planetary material were also pulled along with it in this mm, way okay uh 
now number of you know sizes and the satellites uh, according to the uh, tidal hypothesis the planets uh, sizes are you know uh, uh, remains in the gaseous form for a larger time and the space uh, because the cooling uh, longer time due to their large sizes in order to uh, you know uh, the, in other hand the smaller planets were cooled and condensed with you know very short period of time so large number of satellites were formed from a bigger planet uh, but the size of the uh, such satellites were relatively small uh, whereas uh, you know fewer number of satellites were um, formed uh, from a uh, medium sized planet uh, but the size of such satellites are relatively larger so very small planet occupying the end location of the planetary system were uh, cooled and condensed within very short period of time and hence no satellites could be formed from them the existing planetary arrangement of the solar system confirms above that okay so uh, now by you know carbon dating and uh, you know the, the method we know uh, that relatively how old and when was the uh, evolution of the planet had happened okay uh, now uh, this is this determines the age of the solar system or the age of the earth in a totality okay now when we you know the planetesimal hypothesis also explain are similar to that of tidal hypothesis so where it explains that how the planetesimal uh, you know formulated uh, the uh, central part of the solar system okay now uh, again uh, let me little give uh, give you a little insight about the you know rotation and the revolution inclination also explained in the tidal hypothesis that according to him according to sir jean jean uh, the planet were formed from the filament which uh, you know revolving around the sun and thus the planet of our system also you know uh, revolve around the sun so in our present uh, day solar system or all the planets are revolving around the sun and becomes the direction uh, and the you know same or you know orbital plane so similarly almost all their you know satellites from the planets are all revolving around respective planets in the same direction as the apparent uh, you know planet are revolving around the sun so sir jane in also proposed that the rotation motion of the planet Uh, should also be in the same direction except venus and uranus all the planets of the you know uh, present solar system rotates on their own axis in the same direction and their uh, you know uh, revolution around the type causes the uh, encounters from the primitive sun and intruding star was not in the same uh, plane of the their rotation so the filament which was ejected from the primitive sun with the gravitational attraction of the you know intruding sun uh, star was slightly inclined so thus the axis of rotation of the planet which were formed from the inclined filament uh, should also be inclined as the, you know uh, it, it was moving away now uh, uh, how are the pla- you know planes of the um, orbital Path of the you know various planets are also not matching the you know planes of the rotation of the sun. So uh, uh, there was a need of modification. So by you know Harold Jeffrey, a British scientist, modified the original tidal hypothesis from uh, by James Jeans and presented his concept of collisional uh, hypothesis. That is according to Jeffrey, there were Three stars in the universe before the origin of our solar system. Uh, one was our, you know, primitive sun. The second was the, you know, compensation sun, and third one was the intruding star, which was moving towards the compensation star. Now, this intruding star uh, collided against the compensation star due to uh, due to head-on collision, and compaction star was 
completely smashed and shattered so some shattered portion were scattered in the sky while remaining the debris started revolving around the primitive sun so the impact of the collision and explosion enabled the intruding star to clear itself from the gravitational attraction of the universe okay so this has the evolution of the tidy uh, hypothesis and the planetismal uh, hypothesis also erupted from the same uh, no uh, thought line okay so the evolution that the tidal uh, hypothesis also propounded by James Jean and then modified by Harold Jeffrey had uh, a long uh, period of popularity and widely appreciated till the end of the first half of 20th century because of its simple simplicity of inherent logic and scientific appeal to the hypothesis that had self, you know uh, criticized in the so even jeffrey accepted on uh, gottenberg in 1951 that uh, his modified uh, version of uh, tidal hypothesis needed substantial modification some places were also completely wrong so, uh, so many other uh, criticisms that had it had arrived and risen up from so uh, let like we live in of you know uh, the universe is you know in space and time are also distant from each other which uh, you know that you know such a close in contact between them is a remote possible in the uh, what uh, and distinct went and paused and then speaker ski also proved the critical base population of this fails to explain the real distance between sun and planets why they are in such a way you know fail to explain it so this is why american astronomer that russell raised a serious doubt back uh, a huge amount of material a filament uh, you know would to a primitive uh, sun uh, from the planet and such okay so uh, and we are going to take up this criticism later and talk about the planetary hypothesis of uh, you know uh, solar system in next lecture this is all for today and i would request all of you to go and take the quiz